Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Simon Hull, a Senior Lecturer at the University of Cape Town's Division of Geomatics. Hi there, I'm Tepo Fokani, a researcher with the Alliance for Rural Democracy. Um, hello everyone, I'm Dr. Rosalie Kingwall. I'm a research associate at PLAS, which is the Institute for Poverty, Land and Agrarian Studies at the University of the Western Cape. Today we're looking at uh, what, answering the question, what is land? And like me, you're probably wondering why we need a definition of land. Everyone knows what land is, right? Well, yes, everyone has a view of what land is. The question is whether all of us can agree on what land is. You see, land is not just physical. It also has cognitive aspects. Cognitive means how you think and reason about something, but includes how you come to understand it and form beliefs and attitudes about it. Okay, so the physical may be the ground, buildings and resources, what most people first think about with regard to land. Yes, the cognitive may involve deeper emotional, spiritual and communal ties to land. Absolutely. Think about what it means when somebody says, this is my land, or we want our land back, or more importantly, I belong to this land. At a certain level, that person is referring to the soil and the dust, but truly, on a deeper level, it's about finding an identity in the land. There's a difference between the idea of a person or people belonging to land as opposed to land belonging to a person or persons. This reflects a shift that occurs from land being regarded as an aspect of social identity and status to land regarded primarily as a commodity, though it's never always one or the other completely. Where land is a commodity, it means it becomes a, con a consumption good or capital for investment. Some nations see land as a deity, the giver and the sustainer of life. Okay, so land has multiple meanings depending on the context in which it's used. It doesn't have to refer only to dry earth. Correct. Associate Professor Jamie Whittle captured some of the different meanings in this figure that you see up on the slide. Notice how on the left of the figure, land is identified as only um, fixed earth or terra firma, whereas on the right, it carries multiple meanings, including a consumption good, investment capital, property, and physical space. Okay, so let's sum up. One, land has physical elements and is the basis of the environmental sphere of the universe. Two, Land has connotations of spirituality to some. Three, land has different values according to use, users, and concepts of value and systems of production. Four, land is involved in chains of economic activity. Five, land is involved in how social groups form social bonds and maintain kinship networks. Six, land is a major element of property whether or not it is viewed as a commodity that can be freely bought and sold. Seven, the distribution of land and land uses is a major indicator of wealth and poverty. So to put that all in perspective, we can see that land administration involves juggling multiple balls. With so many different properties and roles in economic and social life, land has to be managed regulated and administered in a way that will, in theory, boost social and economic life and not harm the environment. How all these multiple requirements are met and how competing interests are weighed and balanced depends on each country's policies, laws, strategies and mechanisms that reveal their priorities. The way these play out depends fundamentally on how a country's land administration system is set up and operates. So, in other words, 
land administration in any particular place is not a neutral concept as it reflects a country's socioeconomic and political values. It's possible to sift out the basic concepts that apply to most land administration systems. And thus allows us to discuss these concepts in the abstract, as we do here. In all circumstances, land administration involves juggling with numerous variables and elements at the same time. This complexity is increased where countries have more than one system of law, or what we call legal pluralism, such as in South Africa. We'll discuss these ideas in more detail in later videos. The preference for any particular configuration of elements or systems of authority will always come with trade-offs that need to be understood and justified by the policymakers. So thanks for joining us for this uh, first session where we've introduced you to a very basic understanding of what issues land administration addresses and why it is important. You will have seen that land administration involves multiple elements that address complex problems that involve human relationships concerning land and the environment. These relationships vary according to the different meanings, values, and uses of land and their impacts on the environment. The way a country configures its land administration institutions to address these complex problems will involve making important political choices. So we have not yet looked at the components of land administration in any detail. We have simply stressed that there are multiple aspects and elements that must work in tandem. The climate crisis and massive social inequalities adds an urgency to configuring land administration institutions in a way that will address social and environmental justice. This is all the more challenging when there's legal pluralism and histories and legacies of racial discrimination. So true, Rosalie. All these challenges require a great deal of coordination and articulation to manage the diverse interests and values in land. The multiple elements that are involved also mean that we must have a more systematic approach and a clear understanding of the effects of the approach that we have chosen. Which brings us nicely to the topic of our next session, land administration as a system. Hope to see you there.